I'm I'm blown yeah. away at the, the the circuit court and the appeals court to, for the exact reason that you and I are discussing. I cannot see how a judge of any level would say it's probably a good idea to allow the president of the United States to be sued after they leave office for official acts. I I have always thought that the smart legal argument, if I was on the left, if I were Jack Smith, is to say, fine, the president of the United States can't be sued for an official act, but this wasn't an official act. It was a campaign act or it was a personal act. And 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 I'll make my case about that. I'm I'm truly shocked, historic for the for history, for our republic going forward that this was the way that they, and then frankly, I'm scared about a judiciary that doesn't recognize that. That that That's what actually troubles me most. That, and, and just to play this out real quick, lastly, I see a scenario where you're right. They The Supreme Court says this is insane. Of course, the president has immunity on official acts. We're remanding it back to the lower court. But then the lower court says, "Fine, okay. Uh, everything Trump did was in an official, was in a personal capacity, and they just, and we're back to square one again." Well, then we'll appeal that back up, and we'll go all the way back up to the Supreme Court if we need to, uh, to make sure that <laughs> President Trump's rights and, frankly, the Constitution are vindicated here. You know, it's interesting if you go back and read our founding fathers. If you read James Wilson, James Madison, if you read Chief Justice John Marshall's opinion in Marbury v. Madison. Uh, it was very clear to people of our founding generation that the rule that we've proposed here was the rule that you can't. I, I, I mean, it's common sense. Yeah, it's common sense. I don't as a non lawyer. I'm literally saying we give cops immunity. We give every, uh, so many people, government employees immunity for their official acts. And yet the president of the United States, I, I actually think, look, I can't believe the Biden administration is not willing to weigh in on this and say we don't want some red county or state prosecutor, you know, Missouri or wherever to go after him. I, I just, after he leaves office, I can't imagine that. Uh, but listen, I, I, I want to move on because I want to get into this gag order issue. What started in New York has now moved down to Florida. I mean, maybe they just, <laughs> it's joking, but it's, I was trying to think of a funny joke about moving to Florida, but it's the gag order. So I won't listen. Trump, as I see this, is being prosecuted for the, uh, the, the classified documents that he kept at Mar-a-Lago. Okay. The way I understood this case yesterday was the government saying, we want a gag order so that he can't criticize FBI agents. Now, again, walk me through where I don't get this. So can you explain what, what, what is it that the government, that the prosecution is trying to stop Donald Trump from doing? Yeah. So first of all, it's worth noting that in, in the history of America, uh, until President Trump and these cases came along, no political candidate has ever been subjected to a gag order uh, by a court. Uh, no candidate running for office has ever been subjected to these sorts of limits on their First Amendment rights. What we've seen in case after case after case with President Trump is efforts by these prosecutors to basically shut him up, to get him to, to force him to stop talking publicly about these cases, uh, to stop him from carrying his message to the American people. Uh, what's at issue here in Florida uh, is an attempt by Jack Smith's team to prevent President Trump from talking publicly about the many irregularities in this case. We've raised very serious allegations of prosecutorial misconduct, of irregularities with the way that the search of Mar-a-Lago was conducted. There are very, very serious legal issues at stake in that Florida prosecution. And Jack Smith's response to our raising those issues in the public eye is to attempt to get the court to force President Trump to stop talking. It's deeply un-American. It violates his core First Amendment rights to comment on issues of tremendous public importance. So it's absolutely outrageous. Fortunately, they have not been successful so far. They rushed this attempt at a gag order into court late on a Friday night while we were actually in trial in New York. Uh, we've beaten back their attempt so far, and I think they're going to be unsuccessful for the simple reason that there's no basis in the law to prevent President Trump from talking about this stuff. And there's absolutely no basis in the law uh, for them to get the kind of gag order that they've they've requested. Uh, so, again, it's just it's another uh, another front in this fight uh, against this Biden campaign of lawfare, where not only are they dragging President Trump into court, but they're trying to prevent him from talking about how outrageous all of these cases are. But is there something I'm missing that was in the filing? Like, as I said, like as a lay person, I'm watching back and they're saying he can't attack the FBI. And I'm like, why? Like, what, what, what is it? I mean, in the New York case, 
I, I thought it was wrong, right? But I think that politically and PR wise, I got it. You can't attack the jury. And I think the average person's like, oh, okay, you can't attack the jury because uh, we don't want to influence them or intimidate them. In this case, I was like, I don't get it. Like, why? What? 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 What threat is the FBI like running around? Like, I'm scared of Donald Trump. Like, oh my gosh, he's going to attack. Like, I didn't understand their the rationale. What? What did I miss, if anything, that that made this happen? It felt like, to your point, Jack Smith was like, somebody come up with something quick to get into court Friday night. Yeah, and I mean, it's worth noting that the FBI agents at issue have been anonymized. We've agreed to that, so their names aren't public. It's not like President Trump is singling out individual FBI agents. Uh, what he's talking about is how irregular this raid of Mar-a-Lago, which was conducted by the FBI, was. And I think it's his core First Amendment right to comment sure. on this issue of tremendous public importance. So there's, there's no basis for this. There's no actual security concern uh, with respect to individual FBI agents. President Trump is just commenting on documents that are now public, including the search warrant of Mar-a-Lago, the terms on which it was conducted and the way that it was conducted, which is absolutely his right. With respect to the New York gag order, we had this crazy situation where you had witnesses like Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels going on TV every night just lying about President Trump. Uh, and Judge Mershon prevented President Trump from correcting the record, from speaking publicly uh, just to refute their claims. Uh, Judge Mershon prevented President Trump from talking publicly about things that we'd said in public court filings. Uh, like the fact that we believe Judge Mershon was irretrievably conflicted uh, based on his history as a Biden donor and his, his daughter's work as one of the top Democrat fundraisers in the country. I mean, it's really important to understand what's going on here, which is an attempt by these left wing prosecutors to prevent President Trump from pointing out to the American people how irregular the prosecutions against him are and how absurd all of these different cases are on their face. And, and that to me, that's just it's deeply violative of constitutional norms and President Trump's constitutional rights. See, this goes back to the Caroline Levitt thing that I was telling you about. Right. She didn't attack Jake Tapper. She said, Google him. And, and, and yet CNN called that an attack. And this is the same thing. We're explaining to people the process by which your home was raided. Or in the case of, of the New York case saying, hey, the judge's daughter represents a bunch of clients that are making millions of the verdict is a fact. Those aren't yeah. attacks. And I think where the left is beating us is, is what I always talk about the words, right? They're, they're sort of redefining what an attack is. And the idea like, I, I said, hey, Will, how are you? And you go, you're attacking me. It's like, no, that's a that's a pleasantry. That's a gesture. And you're now using the word attack to say anything that I say is an attack on you. I, I find it so fascinating, kind of like the same thing on the immunity. If we allow this to happen, we've redefined what, what the nature of an attack is and undermined anyone's First Amendment right. Um, I, I just, I, I'm concerned, again, how the left is twisting the judicial system to their short-term benefit to our long-term detriment. Yeah, no, I think that's exactly the right way to frame it. I think the left is so hell-bent on getting President Trump at any cost that they're doing real damage to our legal system in the process. I mean, that's something that as an attorney, as an American, just really concerns me, that they're running roughshod over every rule in the book, all in this desperate attempt uh, to keep President Trump tied up with these trials instead of allowing him to run for president. Joe Biden said it. November 9th, 2022, you can look it up. He was asked about what he was going to do about Trump running for president. And he said he was going to use, quote unquote, means under our Constitution, meaning a campaign of lawfare, uh, to prevent President Trump from being president again. Not that he was going to beat him at the ballot box, not that he was going to campaign vigorously against him, but he was going to use lawfare to prevent President Trump from being president. And that's what we've seen. The gag orders are part and parcel of that. All of these criminal cases are part and parcel of that. There's even civil litigation. You know, they've sued President Trump constantly. The E. Jean Carroll cases in New York, the New York AG's case. It's all an effort to interfere with his ability to run for president. And to me, it's just absolutely despicable. Well, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to like this video, subscribe and click the notification bell to get more.